Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not To Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Walking Dead. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, we're picking up right where the last episode left off. And I love that it's like, alright, we kind of get like the lower angle of like Maggie falling and trying to get back up. But she's get overwhelmed by all the walkers. Like, okay, he's going, Nigga's going to come in, help at the last second. And she gets swarmed and they cut away. I was like, oh, he didn't. I was like, wow, you are a terrible person. Even the fact is they're inside the train and then all of a sudden Negan comes down and he's got that nervous look on him. And it's like, they're like, where's Maggie? He's like, oh, uh, she was right behind me last time. So I was like, whoa. Okay, I see how it is. It's like, all right, let's get through. I'm going to help you guys through. Okay, um, we're going to follow this train all the way to the end, going from, like, one car to the next through these doors. Um, I'll help out. I'll cover anyone that needs it. And then we hear some, like, knocking. It's like, is that to the roof? It's like, no. Could be walkers. But it's like, no, it sounds like Morse code. I'm like, oh, boy. I had to pause it. I was like, woo. The moment Maggie started popping out of the hatch at the bottom, I was like, I was nervous. I was like, ooh, that awkwardness. I'm like, right. I left you for dead after you threatened to kill me. And I try to make it seem like everything was compensated. Like, oh, I don't know what happened to Maggie. I lost. She would only, like, the other suggesting, like, she would want us to keep going. And so for that to happen, I'm like, oh, boy. I was like, oh, this awkwardness. This beautiful, fucked up awkwardness. And so it's like the moment Maggie gets her chance, comes over pistol whips him it's like he saw i slipped he saw me and he left me it's like you can't even deny it she looked at you called out your name negan you didn't help and then i love it it's like uh negan's just kind of like yep that's what happened and even gabriel's like you're admitting it yeah like i said he was kind of nervous he felt a little bad about it because he didn't want anyone to find out what he did but i loved it it's like i was like well i'm caught might as well double down i ain't gonna fight it i'm gonna admit it the fact of the matter is i did do it because the same, it's like the same lady just threatened to kill me at some point. So I'm just, yeah, I, you know, cause I, uh, Alden was like, oh, like, so you tried to kill her. He was like, no, there's a big difference between that and what happened. She slipped and needed my help and I didn't help her. Big difference. Fact is you threatened my life and you you literally said that I was going to get it sooner or later. So I saw an opportunity to like basically like you expect me to put my balls in like and, and like my nuts on the line to save your life when you are threatening to take away mine. It's like once again it's that neat, once again it's so interesting because like there's like interviews with Jeffrey Dean Morgan about like that Glenn line last episode that he wasn't he was he wanted them to change it a little bit, but then seeing it kind of how it was filmed and everything and how it played out he was like oh these fuckers are so good you needed that Glenn line for that to kind of flow the way it is that it is the point that the moment he mentions Glenn people who are on his side will be like 50% will be like nah fuck him just because of that line that's the point that no matter how much he change he has gone through there's still some parts of who he was before as Negan are still there so at the end of it all um, he's just kind of accepting uh, you know, and then the rest of the squad's like, alright, just give us the word, just tell us, we'll, we'll pop them if need be, so, and then Maggie's just kind of like, later, because it's like, it's so interesting that it seems like there's still that part of her that doesn't want to kill him, that even though she really, really wants to kill him, there's still that part of her that's like, right, we need every able-bodied person, because I think for her, it's like, if she kills him, because I think maybe on some level by keeping him alive, it's also like keeping Glenn alive. Like that's like one of her last ties to Glenn. It's a weird thing to make. I'm breathing too much into it, but I think there's something to that. Like maybe it's just like she feels like she'll finally kill off the last parts of who she was before. You know, most of that parts of Maggie are already going in. It's like by killing Negan, she's probably like worried that she'll kill off that last little bit of herself. So she's not trying to do that. So maybe that's the justification um, in that regard. But then there's the whole uh, Gage situation. He's like, guys, come on. I'm sorry about what happened. Like, you got to let me in. Alden wants to let him in, but Maggie's like, we can't. We don't have the ammunition to, like, take down on a walker. There's no guarantee we'll get him through that door and then be able to uh, close it. And then he calls them liars because they're like, we're sorry about it. Because no one, like... The only person that's really trying to save him is Alden, but the, everyone else. Negan's not really saying anything, but everyone else is just kind of pulling him back. Even Gabriel being like, yeah, we can't do anything about it. So Gage, the moment he 
pulls out his knives. I'm like, are you going to, I'm figuring you're going to kill yourself, but it's like, how you do it depend says a lot. And then he stabs himself in the chest. You're like, okay. So this is way, his way to give a middle finger to them because this way I die, but you, they're not good. I'm going to come back as a walker and it's going to be my way to like make you, remind you of what you did. Because the easiest thing would have been just to stab himself in the head just to make it so he didn't come back, but he needed, he wanted to come back so that he could haunt them and be like, right, this is what you did. This is your fault. He's like, yeah, I made a mistake. I needed the second chance, but it's it's not, you know, that's the after thing. It's like, right, Negan gets chance after chance and this kid screws up once, but it's like, right. Yeah, but Negan's in a situation where, yeah, he screwed us over, but it's in a situation where we aren't as doomed if we let him, like, he's in a position where he's with all of us. You are in a position that if we save you, we're putting all of us at risk. We could die. We don't have enough ammunition to fight back. So there's that. And obviously when he does come back, Alden's like, right, none of you can look at him. And then Maggie tells a story about her and Herschel about how, you know, they were starving before she met up with Elijah and their group and how uh, this guy was offering to help her if he if she helped him. He's like, oh, like she was running out of food, so she needed food for her and her son. So it's like she helped him, but she knew he was a liar, took him by the throat with a knife and then put in went in his pockets and found a chloroform rack he was going to use on her. I was like, cool. Once again makes it harder i mean to, to be fair she also like you gain that experience with all the liars and terrible people they've come across in this world so went back to like the place and it ended up being kind of a horror show the the individual the three men that were there she took care of them plus the whole story about the woman i didn't know what she was going to necessarily find but it's like three other women like the, the other women she mentioned sounded like they were alive except this one ended up having the circumstances that she did, so. But it was the thing of Maggie being like, at the end of the day, the first thing that came to my first thing that came to my mind when I found out there were other people alive with heartbeats, they must have enough food to survive. That's the first thing that came to her mind because, you know, it's not about caring about other people. She was caring about what came first and foremost at that point is survival. It's about protecting her son, making sure her and her son survive. Surviving herself only to make sure that her son survives. So that's the uh, sad situation in that regard. And so... It's interesting because the experiences like that are what led Maggie to become who she is now. Like, she's not the same Maggie that left six years ago. Uh, a lot has changed. And she talks about the fact that she's kind of glad because if it, if it wasn't for that need to survive the way she did, like, she wouldn't be who she is right now. And that's kind. she's kind of grateful for that. It's kind of, like, bad, yet also in the better, in the long run, it's better that I, I came out this way. I think it was even interesting, too, for her because she's like, places like Hilltop, um, places like Alexandria, even Meridian, they're very rare places because very few people out there in the world have this figured out. Because now we're seeing, like, you know, in a grand scheme of things, we know that there are a totality of, like, well, there was, like, six communities. Obviously, the one from, like, uh, World Beyond, but that got killed by the Republic. The Republic themselves... Um, the place that Morgan had built, um, Alexandria, there's no hilltop anymore. So there, you can literally count on one hand the, the communities that exist in the grand Walking Dead universe that we're aware of, at least TV show wise. I don't, you know, because I don't know how, because this is so different from the comics. Who knows if anything within the comics could still be considered canon because things are so different between the TV shows. Um, but you can literally count on one hand the amount of communities left. So it's so rare. So, and then Negan kind of finishes what she says that basically it shows that we're lucky uh, because that means we were able to figure out something that no one else did or ever will because there are so few communities. So it's like we should be kind of grateful for like what we have. So, because if it, if it was a situation of they weren't rare, then I guess it would almost make everything that they've done and kind of fault for like a little fruitless. If like other people were able to figure out, like no one was able to figure out. So it's like, that's why we have to hold tightly to these places because they are that rare. They, that are, they are that important because very, very few people have been able to figure it out enough to be able to like bring community, like have a whole community together like that. So to have like even Maggie kind of looking like no realizing that Negan out of anybody like it's a sentiment like 
more so than anything, it seemed like it was something he understood more so than anyone. What I also thought was interesting, though, was like Negan was sitting down and he's just kind of like a little on edge. And Gabriel's like, what's wrong? He's like, I don't know, bad memories. And um, Gabriel's like, of what? Now, I don't know if that's supposed to be pinpointing to something exactly. I don't think I was about to say, I don't think that's something. I don't think that was referenced to like the whole Lucille thing. I don't think that was what I mean, not less it was. I'm trying to figure out because I do know that there was the origins like they're like four like prequel episode things that came out i under the assumption those were amc plus things i have to look into it because i don't remember anything airing about them because i know i think one's about daryl one's about negan one's about was the other one about carol and i think one was about maggie i believe all four of them had one i think those are amc plus exclusive but i could i have to look into it afterwards because i'm curious like if that was kind of tying into something from that or is it something else entirely? Like, was it related to something I'm just not thinking of, like the Lucille thing from, like, the bonus episodes? Um, but regardless, so all the while that's happening, Daryl is chasing after, um, he's chasing after Dog, and he ends up coming across, like, this message from, like, you know, these children leaving a message for their dad. It's like, right, you said, like, if you don't show up in a week, come, uh, move on and it's like mom kind of went after you so me and um was it like jesse and i forgot the other person's name it's like we're gonna go and hopefully we'll see you soon and it's like a message between them and um daryl found the picture so it's like right it's a picture from like before when everything like really really went bad he also came across this picture which i thought was kind of i thought it was very befitting like i think it was it was basically a I think uh, a picture that was like a commentary on like capitalism, I think, or just kind of like people with these crowns and stuff like, is your crown worth your life or something? Um, at first I was kind of like, oh, interesting considering like we're, we haven't really dived into them, but with their name and everything, part of me wonders like, oh, that's supposed to be some correlation to like, not, and not that was meant to represent that, but I'm like, is it, can there some correlation be drawn to like present day with the commonwealth? I wonder, is, is that what their parallels are kind of being set up? But it is that thing of like, right, here's someone else's story that was so cut short. That's the problem. That's the thing about this world is like there's so many stories that uh, doesn't have a happy ending. Like you get, you're part of the group that keeps going, but then when you keep going, you find all these people who weren't able to keep going, you know, whose stories are cut short. And I guess it's almost like you got to have to live a little for not just the people you know that didn't make it, for the people in general who weren't able to make it, so... And then you have, after everything, Daryl running into a C. Thomas Howell's character. Uh, things didn't work out for him or Gage, because it's like, right, I lost Gage, and I lost the bag with all the stuff that I stole. It's like, right, uh, here's this gun, here's this grenade. Go do what you can. Um, if I, you know, when I die, like, let my uh, kid know, kids know I didn't die a coward. He's even telling... Uh, Daryl, like, don't waste your medical supplies on me. Uh, so I, I thought he was, like, bit, but I guess it's just he got uh, injured along the way. But uh, I was wondering whether Daryl, because I feel like they would have shown that, but I guess, like, I was at first I was like, oh, I guess Daryl did just leave him or killed him. But it's like, now we see later on Daryl did patch him up and bring him on. I was like, nah, I'm not, despite your mistakes and everything, I'm not going to let you die here. So ends up bringing him along as... Daryl helps on the other side of things as they're like dealing with the walkers coming through, using up the last of their ammo, arrows, hand to hand, well, melee, like close combat, even Maggie giving Negan a gun and just being like, all right, under these circumstances, like I, I, there's something there. It's like, I think this is a, a necessary thing for them to kind of get their baggage out there because that was also the thing like that, I had skipped over it, but Negan was saying like, I'm trying like, yes, I've made mistakes, but, you know, if it wasn't for me, Alpha would still be alive. It's like, yeah, but he'll top. He's like, yes, but if I hadn't done what I'd done, a lot more heads would be on spikes. So at the very least, he's like, yes, I might be a piece of shit. I might not be the best person. You and me may have history, but the fact of the matter is I am trying. Once again, still doesn't take away the fact is that he's still Negan at the end of the day, that there's still some part of him that isn't fully good. But I mean, it's like, who is in this world? This world's kind of brought out the worst in a lot of people, for better or for worse. I mean, obviously for worse in certain cases, but I think in some other cases, it's like, right, it, you know? I mean, look how this world's changed Morgan from like the multiple different stages like Morgan's going through to where he is right now, where, where the current continuity of Fear the Walking Dead is for him. So there's that angle of things and so 
uh, Daryl ends up coming in at luckily from the other side of the train and ends up being able to open the uh, space open for them. Like, you know, he moved the thing out of the way so they could come through the door. Luckily, that grenade came through. And so, you know, so it all worked out in the end. Negan giving Maggie back the gun. And I think things have changed. It's like, I don't know. It just that look between them like, yeah, we, we've both done some terrible stuff to each other. Like, you've threatened to kill me, I've killed the, the, your husband, the, chi- the father of your child. That I can never take that back, but all I can do is try to be a better version of myself and keep moving forward. That's all I have, that's all I can do. So, now it's like, well, what do we do next? And so what they plan to do is just um, go to like a supply dump that, uh, what was it, uh, uh, that will have like ammo and uh, food and stuff like that. So till they then they can make their way to like Meridian afterwards. So and as I you know Negan, can you lead the way? And he's like, yeah. So I'm like, that's definitely going to be interesting to see where things kind of progress between Negan and Maggie from here. But on the other side of things, we go back to the Commonwealth situation. Our heroes came back. Uh, I love that. Um, also, I've done that recently a lot where I do that misconception of like. I assumed it was like Yumiko's sister. It's like, no, it's her brother, which I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. And she had that conversation about like, yeah, my brother, I haven't seen him in so long. So I just kind of almost assumed he was dead, but also like he could be a completely different person because I had thrown it out there, I think, last episode about the comparison of like, right, Wes thought his brother was dead and the circumstances they met up again. Not, you know, not what he expected, not anyone expected or wanted things to play out that way. But you kind of get the feeling like, oh, well, Kimiko have a similar circumstance with her brother. Like I said, I, for whatever reason, I always just kind of assume like the wrong sibling because I've done that for something else where I'm like, oh, this so and so is like, I either say like brother and ended up being their sister, um, or like sister and it turns out being their brother, like it is in this case. I don't remember, but I definitely know I've done that before. But um, I love that like. Uh, Princess interrupts by being like, yeah, like he kept on to like uh, a wallet for like 10 years. He sounds awesome. And she's like, what? He's like, and Princess is like, oh yeah. And also the thing that you said, I'm like, I lo- I love how weird she is. And I love that because she is the one that can recognize people. It's like, that's that guard lady we've, uh, that came across us last episode when we were being taken, uh, when we were lying uh, last episode, and, like, so she knows, like, she's, like, worried, like, oh, I, I think they've got us figured out, and then, like, Eugene, Harkut, Eugene just, like, immediately coming over to me, like, I think they figured it out, because they took Ezekiel, and they won't tell me, like, what's going on, so they're all nervous, but Yumiko's, like, no matter what happens, stick to the story, we gotta stick to this, we can't tell the truth, because it's, like, right, they probably figured out about what we did, so Yumiko goes in there being the boss, being like, all right, I want to talk to the person in charge, I'm a lawyer, the fact of the matter is, you guys, I pretty much figured out what you most likely did before all of this, you basically have to, uh, prove your um, existence, like, right, like, you have to prove, like, why your job is worth keeping around, while you worth why you're why are you worth keeping around doing this specific job because because the whole point is trying to figure out whether someone is useful or going to be a, a drain on resources you know but and she's even being like yeah sometimes you just gotta trust your gut instincts on whether some whether or not someone's going to murder you uh, in your sleep type of thing and so it's kind of like you need me so at that time like you know and then princess is kind of like tripping tripping out because she's like ah i'm like nervous and everything but also on top of that i have to really go to the bathroom so she talks to one of the guards and then it's like wait you have toilet paper she's like i'm excited (laughs) um and obviously none of them coming back makes uh which I also love that line from Princess too, where she's like, because Eugene's work is like, what about Yumiko? And she's like, the guy, uh, that fine ass guy in orange. I was like, you didn't even have to say all that, but you did. Uh, went in there with a drink. So it must be things must be going good with Yumiko. So everything's going to work out. You know, don't say anything because he just like, let's not separate. But Eugene being the nervous mess that he is, it's pretty clear. So... Uh, dude in orange comes back and questions like, "You're oh, you enjoy being nervous for him? He's like, oh yeah, the way my heart gets pumping, like there's nothing like it when I'm out there, you know, doing my thing, fighting the dead. I, I feel my heart pumping. It's like, you know, and it's like, you, you're kind of a nervous threat. So you've been lying to me, haven't you? You're a terrible liar. So you better start telling me the truth or things could get bad for you. Because Eugene had actually made like a wood shiv, but he kind of hit it and he's just like, okay, I'll tell you the truth. And I'm like, boy, your boy... 
Eugene, it's probably, you know, that thing about lie. Like, I've said it recently about lies. Like, if you keep the lie somewhere near the truth, it makes your lie a lot more believable. So, he basically says, like, right, how I met Stephanie. He isn't really lying, because he's like, yeah, we hit it off. But he was also like, I was worried that, you know, if she really got to know me, you know, he brings up the whole being a virgin thing, and that potentially wanted to change that. And it's just like, and here I am, humiliating myself. And then he's like, but I actually kind of feel good finally getting all of that off my chest. I was like, look at you, Eugene, coming through in the end, my boy, not breaking. Because uh, that's the thing, like, especially when you think about where Eugene started when we got introduced to him in season four to where he is now, like how much stronger he's gotten, how much better he's gotten, you know? And I, I think that's so interesting um, in the long run of, like, who the capable person he's continued to prove himself to be. I'm sure a lot of what he said, there was truth to it. But then it's like, eventually he gets taken away and he gets reunited with everybody. Which I love, dude in orange talks mad shit to Ezekiel. He is like, yeah, by a beat cop. He is like, I was on West Point, asshole. And so like, uh, but they had actually taken care of Ezekiel's circumstances, it seems like. So everything's good. Everyone was brought together. Now, they were worried about Eugene, but here he is. And lo and behold, who walks in but Stephanie? When we see her, I'm like... Not what I expected. She kind of reminds me of, oh God, Nico. Like, from uh, the glasses and everything, like her hairstyle, just kind of slightly reminds me of Nico from uh, Devil May Cry 5. Obviously, not the thick-ass accent that Nico has. But uh, she kind of reminded me of that. I, I, I didn't know what I expected when it came to Stephanie. But um, ultimately, I'm like, part of me is like, is Stephanie just like some random person here? Or is it going to turn out that Stephanie's actually a... Um, is she going to be the boss of this place? Probably not. But part of me is also wondering, like, could she actually not be Stephanie and someone just playing the role of Stephanie because they heard about her from Eugene? So they're going to use that. To, but it's like, right, he'd know, he'd know the voice, so it makes a lot of sense. And she's like, is anyone here named Eugene? And he's like, me. And she's like, hi, I'm Stephanie. It's like, dude, it finally happened. Uh, so that's definitely going to be interesting to see how this common word, uh, well, thing plays out. Because it's like, right, can't necessarily at this point tell your people, tell them like, hey, we need help for our people. Like what you'll most likely do is like, oh, we found this other community. We should probably help them out. You never know. Probably have to cover their bases like that type of thing. That's probably the only way they'd be able to get like help back to Alexandria type of thing. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that plays out. But then we cut to the end, you know, where it's just like, all right, they're on their way. And then suddenly they get attacked. I love, like, home dude gets his arms, like, his hands sliced off. See, Thomas Howell, it looked like he got an arrow to the eye that was it. And I was like, oh, I, like I said, if we cut to the scene of, like, oh, actually, Daryl took care of you. You're fine. And it looks like, oh, you might have gotten killed. Or they were, because I didn't see his body. So they might have dragged him behind the car. So he might actually be okay. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of messed up if he ended up dying after Daryl went through a lot to save him. Um, and everything, but, uh, yeah, crew of, uh, some very intimidating, scary people roll up, so, definitely gonna be interesting to see where everything takes us going forward into the next episode with all that, I'm assuming that they're connected to the people that attacked, uh, Meridian, because even Negan was like, yeah, this place has gotten a lot worse than the last time I was here, because we saw, like, bodies hung upside down from, like, trees and stuff like that, so... We'll see what it all means and what it all turns out to be next episode as this threat comes uh, closer. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the force, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.